Rosh Hashanah is a PhD student at uh, Baharat Tisan University. You're going to fix me later on on how to pronounce it better, please. Uh, Rasha is a PhD uh, student at the University on Theoretical Physics uh, faculty or school in India. She works on chaos theory and she uses uh, machine learning to predict patterns in chaotic systems like climate, society, and the brain. In addition to developing algorithms, she tries to build artificial net, uh, neural networks using electronic circuits. She is passionate about art and languages and hopes to use them to bring science a lot to a larger audience. When she is not coding away on her computer, she reads, paints, stretches, and writes to do lists. And of course, she has a very, very active Twitter account, which you should all follow and, and uh, collaborate with. Russia, the floor is yours. Uh, sorry, the topic of your presentation is building brains on circuit boards. Now your floor is yours. Okay, hello everybody. Uh, and in today's talk, I'm going to uh, talk about how you can build a physical artificial neural network. So let's begin with artificial intelligence. Uh, recently, we've been hearing a lot about uh, AI, big data, machine learning, neural networks. What connects these is that these are all our attempts to mimic the human brain. Uh, in other words, to create a machine that thinks. Uh, but why, why do we need a machine that think? Aren't humans enough? But th there are so many tasks which require huge amounts of data processing, like uh, when we want to do, see the first uh, photograph of the black hole, or when we want to uh, read the scripts from the languages we lost thousands of years ago, or when we want to predict how the climate is going to change uh, in a 10 years. These tasks require so much of computational power, which we are incapable of. But the normal computers, the ones that we use, use these days, uh, are not uh, able to think. You can only program them. They take your orders and they do what is told. And they can't perceive analogies and abstract similarities. They're, they're so bad at it. And that's because they take things so literally or maybe like this. Uh, let's say a task which humans are uh, so easily able to do, but an, a computer cannot do. This is a three, and this is also a three. So is this, and this, and all these. These do look very different, but we still know that all of these uh, point out to the same number three. How is that? It is because we are able to find a common pattern among this, a similarity. A conventional computer will not be able to do this. It will definitely say that these are 11 different characters. Uh, so that's where machine learning comes in. So machine learning uh, enables the computer algor algorithms to learn and gain this power of interpreting similarity. Uh, so these algorithms can uh, learn either from examples, like how we learn to recognize numbers in different fonts, or we may let it learn by uh, trial or error, like a kid learning to ride a bicycle. So it lets you mimic the human brain. And, in uh, and one of the most popular ways of imitating the brain is by a, uh, artificial neural networks. Just like the brain, these neural networks have layers of neurons connected to each other by synapses. And this is how a typical neural network works. But typically it has uh, lots of more neurons, like thousands and thousands of neurons with so many layers. But let's have this for now. So we give the inputs or the stimuli into the nodes of the input layer. Depending on the information in the nodes, the nodes in the successive layers fire. The layers in between are called as hidden layers because you don't really know what exactly is going on in there. It's kind of like a black box. And based on these, uh, how these neurons fire or get activated, we'll get uh, an output in the output layer. And for different tasks, we need to uh, change the connections between the different layers. Uh, let's see the example of how uh, a neural network can do this task of recognizing one of these trees that I wrote. 
Uh, and this task is technically called as handwritten digit recognition. So we have this neural network and we have this character that I wrote. Um, we give the image of the character to the algorithm. The image is then split into numerous chunks and fed, fed into the nodes of the neural network. Uh, there, there can be more nodes than what I represented here. That's why I put three little dots in there. Uh, depending on which chunks have a uh, character in them or which uh, chunks are blank and the weights of the connection between the neurons. Uh, the weights tell you how important uh, each connections are. So based on these, the neurons in the next layer will fire. And then based on uh, which neurons fire uh, and the uh, weights in the next layer, we get in the next layer and the information flows through this direction and finally we'll get the answer uh, that's how it works uh, but when you actually build a, a neural network you don't have these uh, lines and circles you'll just have uh, mathematical equations and matrices so uh, you'll be disappointed to see a neural network in uh, in in work uh, so, and also there are so many different ways a neural network can be built. It needn't have to be this linear and uh, where the information flows in one direction. Uh, there are uh, neural networks where the information can flow between different layers or even back into the same neurons. And this particular type of network, which we are going to focus, are called as recurrent neural networks. And uh, Instead of having the linear correct connections, we can also have random connections. So uh, there's a peculiar property of for a recurrent neural network. Uh, it is that because of the recurrent connections, they behave like a dynamical system. Now, welcome to the part where chaos theory meets machine learning. Dynamical systems theory is one of the uh, foundations of uh, complex systems and chaos theory. Uh, in simple words, it considers how systems evolve with time, and this evolution can be predicted by a set of equations or mathematical models. So with the fact that uh, the, the property that uh, recurrent neural networks behave as dynamical system, we have a new computational phenomena called as reservoir computing. So uh, instead of calling it the hidden layers, we now call it a reservoir. So what is cool about our, uh, this reservoir computing is that uh, in, in, in the normal neural networks, you have to compute the uh, weights in the input layer and the hidden layers uh, for each different task. But here, you don't have to find them. You have to uh, change only the output layer, the weights in the output layer for different tasks. This is similar to putting different filters for different effects. And this saves a huge amount of computational time and effort. And the fact that they behave like a dynamical system gives rise to a question. Instead of building layers of neurons and making them behave like a dynamical system, why not use an actual one? So that's what we did. We replaced this hidden layer with an actual physical dynamical system, a chaotic circuit. Uh, so I am using this simple looking electronic circuit as the neural network, and I teach it how to compute and do a tiny little task. So this is the circuit which I am making behave like a brain. Uh, we, the circuit is called as a, uh, a chaotic oscillator. It has both uh, periodic and chaotic oscillations, which make it so uh, useful as a reservoir computer. So uh, we made a circuit, in, a circuit into a reservoir computer with these uh, simple steps. Uh, so we first build the reservoir as a simulation, a neural network algorithm. We train it for set, certain tasks and test how it performs on the tasks. And then based on those observations and we fix the circuit parameters and we build an actual physical circuit and we make it do the same task. 
so the task we made this RC to do, uh, this reservoir to do, is to predict this nonlinear curve. So uh, I fed the reservoir with a third of the data, that is like sets of inputs and outputs. So I trained it uh, to recognize what sort of output it should get for what sort of inputs. And for the remaining two thirds of the data, I tested uh, its performance and it did a great job. As you can see in the figure, the blue dots, uh, which are the reservoir's predictions, match exactly with the green curve, the expected curve. So that's it. We made the circuits to learn. So now we've come a long way from normal computers to artificial neural networks to a special kind of neural network, the recurrent neural network, which behaves like a complex dynamical system. And we took a detour into the realm of chaos and we emerged with a physical reservoir computer made of this simple chaotic oscillator. That's it. We built a tiny brain on a circuit board. Um, I'm so sorry if you came here expecting something like this. Uh, this is not the reality. So thank you all for uh, eagerly coming to this talk to everyone and especially my friends and family and also to Ido and Danny for this uh, uh, exciting conference. Uh, and please reach out to me at my Twitter uh, if you would like to talk about my research or complex systems and chaos theory in general. Thank you.